Noisy Pixel. What's up, nerds? Welcome to the Noisy Pixel Podcast, the official podcast of NoisyPixel.net, where you can find gaming news, reviews, previews, and all that gaming goodness. As always, I'm your host, Brian Lee, and today, as always, I'm joined by Victor Aparicio. I got an empty bowl of cereal. What was in it before that? Uh, Rudy Tooties, the off-brand uh, fruit, 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 uh, Fruity Loops. Fruity Loopies? Yeah, go always go off brand with your cereal. They you spend way too much money for no reason, and they taste the, same. the same. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite off brand cereal? Oh man, you're putting me on the spot. I like the uh, honeycomb ones, the the ones that I forgot what they call them, but the honey note, the honeycomb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. What, you got one? Uh, off brand cereal. I don't know. I've never. I'm a. I'm a bougie boy. I don't really eat off-brand cereal. <laughs> <laughs> what are you uh, trying to say about me, Brian? Uh, I think off-brand cereal. Do they make an off-brand version of Pops? Because Pops is like my favorite cereal. I believe so. Yeah. And then I, yeah, I feel like I'd be all up in that. But I'm biased against Pops, though. I, I can't talk about Pops without getting angry. Mm-mm-mm. You just that's so weird. <laughs> it's just like this, this cereal, this one cereal gets me so so angry, so 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 well, so furious. Well, well, growing up, I always thought their commercials were very hyped where the, where they might as well have grabbed you by the shoulders and by the shirt and just been like, You gotta get you, I gotta have my pops. And I'm just like, Mom, 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 we gotta go get pops. And we get like it took her forever because she doesn't really, she only gets like you know cornflakes where you got the sugar room yourself or whatever and then when we finally get it i'm just like man the one with the marshmallows is way better i was always mad about that mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i feel like pops is like the klondike bar of cereals no way in regards no to way. no but like in regards to like the commercial where like what would you do uh, for a klondike bar and there's like gotta have my pops you know okay so I that that in that sort of aspect okay so let's say the marketing for pops is like the klondike bar of cereals every time klondike does ask me that question though they're just like what would you do for a klondike bar i'm Murder. just like go to the, go to the <laughs> store <laughs> oh man you go to the store they're not that they're not that hype that's true i don't really like klondike bars Suddenly, everyone know. tunes out, doesn't listen to this podcast anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're spilling a bunch of blasphemous. Yeah. So. Anyways, moving on to video games, stuff that probably will be less controversial or maybe more controversial. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> what 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 you been up to, uh, Victor? Since last week's episode, what you been playing? Well, my review. Me, Zoni. Hold on, I actually have an a an, an, uh, uh, pronunciation here. Okay. Muta Zone. Uh-huh. Is what the game was called. I remember I struggled with it last time. Mm-hmm. Uh, my review for that is out. I gave it a I gave it an eight um, because um, for okay for so for those who don't know, it's the one I talked about where it's just like it's a uh, it's like a point click adventure. It's all about its story is very dialogue and story heavy, obviously for a point click. But uh, the point of it is it's like it's kind of like a soap opera. So you know you get to know this cast of characters. They got their dramas. They got their stuff. And like the more you talk to them, the more you know about the context and the inside of why they, you know, have the problems that they have. And then and on the side, you get to grow gardens and maybe grow some stuff that makes them feel better mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And it's great. Um, I gave it an eight because uh, story wise, I think it's written very well. Uh, I enjoyed all the dialogue. I really cared about those characters and uh, I never wanted it to end. And then it did. And I, and I was just like, oh, well, OK. Um, but, um, you know, if you don't really like those games that like sort of quote unquote don't have a point then uh then you know you probably won't enjoy this if if you like you know if you play other story games like i don't know like like vampire life is strange or any uh, i just really am just na- naming don't nod games but any of those story games uh where you know uh there's some action there's some conflict and you know all that stuff then yeah sure but yeah that's the game it's great hmm. i like it good 
be sure to check out the review on noisypixel.net. That's right. Um, and I just started uh, our review of a uh, Greedfall. Um, so yes, gonna be we fun. passed it along. Brian, right. Brian's been a little overwhelmed, so it is passed on to to Victor Aparicio. Oh, poor Brian. Um, no, yeah. So we talked about it before. It's from Spiders. Uh, the people who did. Um, gosh, I'm already forgetting what what, what did I say it was. Anyways. But uh, uh, just just from the very like knee jerk reaction because like I just started it, yeah. Um, I like to say it's like an Assassin's Creed mixed with like, um, The Witcher in, in terms of like looks and like RPG. Like yeah, the aesthetic does stuff. remind me a lot of those two games. I think initially when I first saw the trailer for, it, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is like Assassin's Creed looking. Mm-hmm. And the. And uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to do my like. I I made my character and watched and watched like the opening scene, and then that's when I realized I was like, oh no, something else is due like today, and I didn't realize. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to clean some stuff up and get some heads down. But I will have an opportunity. To keep playing it. Nice. So look up. I'm look looking up forward for to to hearing what you think about it. Yes, yes, of course. What about you, Brian? What, what have you been playing? Uh, not too much this last week. It's, it's been pretty busy. Hence why you're doing the review. Um. Gotcha. Yeah, just a little little peek into my life. Uh, basically, I, uh, me and Jess are trying to book a wedding venue within the next like couple months. So that's that's been us just running around places and you know setting up appointments and stuff. You know, it's like a it's like real life real life questing. It's <laughs> it's less fun, <laughs> less fun, and, and you're paying a lot of more money than you would be paying in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah no so that's that's been me I've, uh, <laughs> these microtransactions are ridiculous yeah these these you can't call these microtransactions anymore <laughs> fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> um, you, know you know how many skins i can give that <laughs> uh but or yeah so that's me, i've been uh, Jack in the box tacos. That's yeah, right. You know how many Jack in the box I, I can have enough to feed my entire wedding party. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll get a catered by Jack in the box. No, Jess would kill me. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I've been doing. I've been playing the game of life, basically. Uh, <laughs> other than that, I kind of like when I when I have some some free time. Uh, I, I picked up uh, Guild Wars Two again. Um, I haven't played it since they like before they announced DLC at all for it. Um, so like I played it when it first came out, and I level capped it to eighty, and then did I did all like the story quests and stuff like that, and then I put it down, um, and then I recently picked it back up because uh, I bought the the DLCs for it because it comes with like mounts and things like that because it introduces mounts. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, so it, what what I like about guild wars as a rpg is i feel like you can pick it up and put it down whenever you want and you're not really like missing out on anything because it's a very um it's not super grind heavy i don't think because you you kind of just take everything at your own pace which is nice i was looking at some like videos on it be like oh what what does it take to get back into it in 2019 and they're like oh yeah Mm -hmm. you know like it's not it's not very gear dependent so you like you're you're not worried about like oh i'm always going to be behind if i don't constantly keep playing this game it's like no you can just pick it up and you'll be the same as anybody else would be nice. um and then like the world v world and pvp stuff you get like it auto scales you um and stuff like that so that's pretty dope as well so i've been i've been having some fun with that um so i basically just go in and do like maybe a quest or two and then uh hop off and then go keep doing my own thing um but it, I've, I've been really enjoying it. it when picking it up again i forgot just how good of a rpg guild wars 2 is and in fact like i remember when i first bought guild wars 2 i was like wow this is like the best rpg i've ever played this this is the best mmorpg i've ever played Damn. because um, it was a one-time pay and you can play it forever like even now coming back to it i've already bought it and i can play it there's no subscription fee or anything like that and then what's nice is for new people who haven't played the game if you just buy the 
most recent DLC because the base game is free now. Yeah. The base game you can play all of it up to level cap and everything for free. Um, you're just limited to, to not being able to do certain zones that are um, in the DLCs, so you can't do yeah. anything DLC content wise. But you, if you buy the most recent DLC. I think it's called like Path of Fire or something like that. You get the previous DLC on top of it. Um, and it comes with a free like level 80 boost. So if you want to just like dive right into it and go right into it, you totally can, um, which I think is great. They really, yeah. they they streamlined it um, so that you can, you know, that you can enjoy as much content in like as short of a time as, as, as possible. Like it doesn't feel like a slog to do things. Yeah. Um, without making it feel like you're, you know, blasting past uh uh content. Like like you're you where you can't appreciate the content. Um because you can get EXP from doing literally anything. Like you 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 exploring a new area gives you EXP. And you <laughs> like finding waypoints gives you EXP and and certain things like that. Um which is what I appreciate about Guild Wars 2. Like you're still having to earn it because you have to like go explore and do it. But you're still, but you could still like get EXP while doing it. So you're not just limited to just killing monsters and doing quests and stuff like that. Um, which I think is really cool. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't played Guild Wars 2, I highly recommend it. The DLC is like, I think 30 bucks and you get all the previous stuff with it. Yeah. I was just watching a trailer here for the Ice Brood Saga uh, DLC here. And apparently this is a full rock concert in the game. Oh, that's pretty dope. <laughs> and, you get, and you get like headbanger emotes and all that stuff. It looks funny. Yeah. I like Guild, Guild Wars 2 has its own identity as a MMORPG that I really enjoy. Um, where you can't really compare it to like World of Warcraft and like Final Fantasy and stuff like that. Like the combat mechanics are different. They have a lot of very unique mechanics that some of them I think are, are really smart may mm -hmm. not be for everybody but i think it's really smart like for mounts for instance like games such as uh, like world of warcraft you 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 get mounts as like loot drops and things like that or you buy them in the store and there's like a variety of mounts right but they all basically do the same thing they either fly or you run right this one there's only six mounts in the game i think six or seven mounts but each mount is does a specific thing so there's right. your mount for like flying. Here's your mount for for there's like a dinosaur mount, and each mount has their own like abilities on what they do. Um, and you can level up your mounts to unlock more stuff for them, which I think is really cool. And if you want to make your mount look different, you can like dye your mount whenever you want to different colors, or you can like buy skins for your mounts in the in-game like cash shop, mm -hmm. which um. Which is nice because I like how the other thing that I really like is how they do their cash up thing because you can convert gold that like you earn while playing the game into gems, which is their cash up currency. So there's a conversion rate. You can convert it both ways. So if you bought gems, you can get gold. If you have gold, you can convert it to to gems. So theoretically, if you just play the game, you can you can get everything in the game <laughs> without having to spend any additional money. That's cool. Yeah, I like it. I, I always want I always want to get an MMO, but like I was just like oh the, the time commitment, but uh, everything you're saying here this is the one for you pick up and play yeah this is the one for you man and it's one of those ones where it's it's an enjoyable single player experience you know like the some MMOs where it's like oh I have to like have friends playing or I oh I have to like I can't do certain things because people aren't or like I'd have to join like a a group of people that I don't know mm -hmm. you can enjoy most of the content by yourself um without having to worry about any of it nice yeah and it because it's a lot of the when they first made the game is to encourage players to play cooperatively so um when you like you you don't you don't have that whole thing where it's like oh i helped somebody kill a mob and now he doesn't get credit or i but i don't get credit for it or i i'm killing it and then he kills it and he doesn't get credit for it or whatever everybody gets credit for everything <laughs> You all get your own individual drops for loot. Um, and then, like, if you die, you can just wait and some random person can just come back and, like, res you Left 4 Dead style by, like, coming <laughs> next to you and just, like, slowly healing you until you get back up. So I think that's pretty cool, too. So you don't have to worry about, a, you know, it's it doesn't it doesn't feel like a slog and everyone's in it together and trying to help each other out and do things. 
That's super cool. Yeah. I like that. Mm. But anyways, that's yeah. me. You yeah. should check it out. If you get it, we'll we'll play together when I have more time. I will, I will get it. I will get it. Even if I play it for a second, I'll get it. Uh, yeah, you should. It's it's a really good game. I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, moving on to news. What's uh, what's new in gaming that you find interesting? No, 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 no. I like that the PlayStation State of Play just got announced. Mm. Yeah. So for for those who don't know, the State of Play is uh, PlayStation's thing that they stabbed me in the heart with when they canceled PlayStation Experience. Mm-hmm. So so uh and the dagger is the state of play but at least state of play is a pretty cool knife it's it's the knife that you can check out um they're just like the nintendo directs uh like sort of in presentation too i like the first episode's presentation i was just like this is literally nintendo direct but anyways that's fun i like that sony's made a sony direct sort of thing that's cool yeah um so for tuesday the 24th um i believe in the middle of the day at like 1 p.m uh our, our time, Pacific time. All, all you New Yorkers and Europeans, you get out of here. You, you find out your time. Do <laughs> Find the time zone calculator. I don't care. Yeah, do your maths. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, they asked for that time. Um, it's They said it's around 20 minutes. So, it's like it's a little beefy. I, I like it. Um, and you can sort of tell why. Because um, shortly after that, uh, Naughty Dog was just like, yo, we're going to show off last of us part two and mm-hmm. then my heart dropped and i was like whoa hold on because i'm a big old a big old sony bias boy <laughs> um and um although sadly they did uh preface that there is no ps5 news like they just stomped on all of our it's so funny how much sony is just willing to just like just like like cut it off just stop it there just like no don't even get excited um i love it and then at the same time they give us part two so um, there's speculation for uh, Ghost of Tsushima because, uh, you know, they only had that one like big gameplay or like, you know, a section of gameplay video and then that's it. They went dark. Um, and then they just bought Insomniac. So people are saying like they probably already had a game in development before they bought it, like before like all this partnership stuff started going on. So mm-hmm. they're running what's going on there. Personally, I have my fingers crossed for more uh, spider-man dlc even though they said they weren't going to do that mm-hmm. still they surprised us with the sam raimi suit even though they said they weren't going to make anymore so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. here i am thinking they're they're lying they're lying again um but i don't know but they but sony games also makes a uh, some vr games so maybe they'll surprise us with like a small just a small team a, VR new, a new ratchet and clank right uh, it's a brand new <laughs> ratchet, ratchet and clank, clank VR, yeah, that's right. um so yeah so there's some rumors swirling around there. I think personally, my my big not going to happen, but still my wish list is that, um, you know, even though they said they weren't going to do like big PS5 details, I'm hoping they'll just like have like playful, like sort of like splashes. They're just like, like ooh, like, like, like maybe just like say the name. Mm. Like maybe just be like, hey, it's the PlayStation 5 and it's coming later. <laughs> Calm down. Like, stop speaking blame, but just because we didn't say it's a PS5 doesn't mean it's not going to be called PS5. Yeah. But anyways. So, anyways. So, that's my thing. What, what, do you, what do you think PlayStation might announce? What would PlayStation announce? Yeah, they got 20 whole minutes to announce something. What do you, what oh, do you think? man. I'm trying to think of, like, a big PlayStation thing. What, what's a... Uh... <laughs> oh my gosh okay <laughs> not what i think they, they're gonna announce what i hope they announce i hope playstation announces a new nba street game because <laughs> i fucking miss those games dude those are good games those games are so so much fun and i and i really really hope they bring that back um but yeah no i have no idea dude this, 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 i'm trying to think of what like is it gonna be an 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 original game? I hope it's like an original game that they announce. What I do anticipate, since this lands on the same day as uh, you know, like what they call the drop when new PlayStation games go on the PlayStation Store, yeah, is that they're they're just gonna do the usual like, hey, play this like right now, and hopefully it's like something cool, mm. like some like maybe something PT level, but one can dream, or it's just mm. like, what is this? I don't know what it is. But as soon as people play it, they're like, oh my god, it's a brand new. It's Shimu Four. <laughs> or what know. if they like, they do uh, 
freaking like some sort of cloud service that they do where you can just like cloud stream certain games from them like uh like like old school ps1 games they're just like welcome to the the giant ps1 collection we've digitized all the ps1 games for you to play right now digitize yeah like a whole new like curate section in like playstation now yeah That'd be pretty cool That'd be pretty cool. That is like they could do like PS1 library and then it's just like a bunch of like curated PS1 games and then PS2 library and the, and it's just like the best of each generation but in like a cloud game claiming gaming like a uh, uh platform. That'd be pretty cool. I could dig yeah, it. Sick. People are still hoping that in the play in the state of play mm-hmm. they 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 now they still have hope for a PSX. They're like hopefully they announce the date for PS6 <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm so, yeah, so sorry. So sorry. I mean, I'm holding on hope too, but I pretty, I pretty much know. Yeah, it's, it's, we, it's, we all know. It's over. It's over. That's that ship sailed. Um, someone, someone here in the comments of the PlayStation blog is saying that they should re-release <laughs> the PlayStation Home, the that service on on PS3, where it was just kind of like it was kind of like Second Life. No, but uh. <laughs> You know what? I mean, they gotta I, figure out like a use for the PSVR, right? So, what if they did like a VR chat thing, but for yeah, but for, but oh, for yeah. PlayStation? I would love that. I'm not gonna lie, I I did. There is a small place in my heart for PlayStation Home. I would go on there and uh, and just harass random people. I would just be like, hey, mm-hmm. hey, and, like I just like make fun of their names and stuff because I used to be a bully, an online bully though. No, no, no real bully. No really bullying. Cut that out, mm-hmm. bullies. Don't be mean to people. Cool. Uh, that's my whole. That's don't my whole. <laughs> don't bully. That's the PSA. Don't everybody be good to everybody. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's my PSXA. Yes, yes, don't exactly. Bully. What other what other news is interesting? Any anything else that you think was pretty cool? Think that's been talked about this last week? Mm, well, you just told me how cool Guild Wars Two is, so that's some news. That's some news for you. It's <laughs> good. No, um, hmm. I'm not too sure. I mean, I mean, I know like the Nintendo Switch Lite is out mm. now. So in case you guys have been living under a rock, you can go now live under Nintendo and just watch them just laugh at you because now you can't have the 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 uh, Switch Fit ring or or Labo or anything like that. And Nintendo's just laughing right at you. Okay, so speaking of. PSX and like trade shows. Did you see that Mark. thing where there's the they're re- trying to rebrand E3 2020 as the quote unquote oh, yeah. fan media and influencer oh, festival? Mm-hmm. <laughs> how do you how do you feel about that? Well, it was fine until they said the word influencers. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't have anything like strong against like influencers mm-hmm. or like or like you know these or like these clearly like you know like baked in just like half-hearted like celebrity show up or whatever but it's just like it's just like I, I don't know like what you don't really have to try too hard to appease gamers mm-hmm. stuff like that so like you don't need to like bring in some dude from youtube that they need or like some or like like keanu reeves is cool sure yeah but like I think we I think we talked about this before. Like I I like I like knowing celebrities and influencers that come in that are just like genuine and you know they care because you see them like all the time just talking about games and stuff. Yeah. So um, so I don't know. Like it, like every time I just think of influencers, I just think of that guy who froze during the the, the <laughs> uh, Need for Speed <laughs> yeah, presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, that guy is funny. Like I I remember I watched this video explaining what happened to him how the teleprompter changed and i'm just like i'm like all right that's a little legitimate but you know that would never that would never happen if you had a professional who knew how to you know be on the spot like knew how to like just candidly just you know, yeah like that's, just that's, spitball. that's such a weird thing because like it, it's our influencers not the same thing as consumers you know what i'm saying like they're also the people who are going to be buying your shit mm-hmm. like but uh, uh, like I don't know. Is are we talking like? Because I feel like why are we talking up these people like with the title influencer as if they're you know to like legitimize them and to like make them more 
hyped up than what they actually are, which is just people with opinions like us. Like we're, we're not fucking influencers. We just have opinions about games. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it is a, it is a very like blurred line. Cause like there are like quote unquote influencers, like YouTubers and stuff like that who do have a sense of legitimacy. But, but like I said, it's because like they built that reputation. You watch them from like day one, like, building this audience building their knowledge and like their critiques and you and eventually you start to know that like, what their critiques what they like what you know yeah and like and eventually you like that's becomes like top like your top 10 sources like the one of the things you check out when like a new game game comes out or something yeah like that. and while other ones are just like some dude it's just some dude has a lot of views and then that's when i don't like it yeah where it's just like a dude who plays a video game and then everyone just watches him play it but like he has no actual opinion about the game he just plays it yeah and then it's yeah weird. yeah because that's like what's the because i was gonna say like what's the difference between you know how like uh on like rotten tomatoes and stuff like that they got like movie critics and then there's like general consumer consensus so like what's mm-hmm. the difference between an influencer and a critic you know like where would influencer fall on that line i don't know yeah I, I, i'd have to think about it for a while <laughs> it's yeah it's super it's super weird and yeah it's a shame because I think well, like, I, what I miss like about these trade shows is that like it was a time for just regular people to show up and then for like companies to be like, hey, here's some cool shit, mm-hmm. you know, instead of now you just like have to hear it through somebody else. Right. It's like, here's a party mm-hmm. for you're not you're not invited to. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> Wish you were here. <laughs> like <laughs> it's like kind of a dick thing to do, I feel, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm just like it's just a an ex it's just an excuse to to I feel like you know captive like hold hold influencers captive and like force them to do content for you. Yeah, I I I liked more the like supposed like assumed trajectory that E3 is going for because like since the very beginning to like right now uh still now it's been a trade show hmm. like you know a bunch bunch of developers publishers like third party manufacturers of like you know console stuff all that's all them come in and their job was you know to sell their product to say like hey you want a po- you want a palette of all this stuff mm-hmm. and like your game stops or whatever right and and then a little bit lately like maybe a year or two they're just like okay we're going to slowly give out more and more uh fan passes so it can be like a little more public people come in and have fun and i was like i enjoy that like mm-hmm. you know i mean the only other problem that serves is that you know again people were there for a job and like you know all these fans are in the way yeah um i don't know and then i don't mean to say that like it's a <laughs> get out of my way kid and just show them the floor well no, the um, thing is like oh hey kid you're probably gonna just buy one of these games you're not gonna buy like walmart's like copious yeah. amounts of copies of this it's to sell yeah, yeah, yeah. like i don't give a shit about you currently like to be honest so so that was the one thing i liked about the plan was one day was like hey this is for the fans and then the other days are for people who are doing their job yeah and, you know and shaking hands and doing meetings yeah so yeah i don't know yeah but every, i definitely like, everything think that else... they just need to like segment it out you know right they need to make up two mm-hmm. different things they're, they're, they're trying too hard to do everything at once and i think it's kind of ruining it for everybody because then the fans are like oh we're here to do fan things but you're trying to do business things for fan day and then then you got business day is like oh shoot you're trying to we're trying to lock a million dollar business deal but what's his face wants to take pictures (laughs) like (laughs) (laughs) yeah so it's it's kind of it's kind of sucky i I don't know any other commission that has this problem because like like packs and all that stuff like that started like fanish right yeah it was just like hey come here and like you know maybe get some swags mm-hmm. swag bags mm. i don't know yeah don't it's know it's it's know. weird but we i think we need to we need to work on what we actually want to do with trade shows and what their purpose is you know like what's the difference between a video game like party event for friends like a fanime sort of expo sort of thing and then mm-hmm. what's uh, and then like a more GDC type like business, you know, talking to like talk to other people in within the same industry, but in different roles sort of situation. Um, yeah, like a networking networking event versus like a like a public fun for funsies event. We need to figure out how 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 uh, how we we as an industry want to start doing those things. 
I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, moving on. What what other stuff is there? Oh, I saw a trailer for a game recently. Mm-hmm. Um, that I'm really interested in. It's called Little Misfortune. Uh, I think it's gonna be on Steam and like GOG and the Epic Game Store. Um, but it's 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 like a really like cutesy looking game. But it's one of those ones where like the art style and stuff is super cute and like it seems really innocent and shit, but it gets really dark and like twisted. Um, mm-hmm. And the, yeah, the trailer the trailer just is, is just really funny because um, there's like a narrator and then you, you're, the main character is like this little like f- like I think French girl or whatever, and then uh, and and she she's like trying on the search for how to like find the ultimate happiness or something like that and like a bunch of weird occult stuff starts happening and things and it's really <laughs> it's it's really trippy um and i'm it, it's made me very very intrigued it goes from like oh it's a nice fall like day you're walking around the park playing with animals and there's like rainbows and things like that to she's on like a boat with death <laughs> 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 and like like a bunch of all this like occult shit starts happening it's so it's so weird um oh no it's so okay so I, I i looked at the trailer but apparently the game is out september 18th so it came out two days ago so i'm gonna pick it up and i'm gonna play it mm. um nice. but in case you guys weren't aware slow hashtag slow poke meme hey have you guys heard about this game called little misfortune you guys should play it it looks the trailer looks cool um but yeah that that's that's one thing that i thought was really really neat uh that people should check out uh sure. another cool thing that was uh shown within the past like couple of days was um that they showed a little bit more for final fantasy the final fantasy 7 remake features where they showed off um like the the other combat mode uh classic mode so mm. The combat for Final Fantasy VII is a little more. It's it's like a like an action combat system where there's a um, where like you 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 fight and as you fight like a gauge builds up, um, which allows you to like pause and then execute some special attacks and stuff like that. So so that it's more action RPG like. But they also have a mode you can turn on called classic mode, where it's it's not a hundred percent like Final Fantasy VII like turn based combat, but they mm-hmm. tweaked how their action combat works so that it gives more of a feel of being a turn based uh, mechanic. So how it goes okay. is um, when you're in classic mode, um, the regular like basic attacks are automatically going off. You don't have to do it um, yourself. And the the meter starts filling up by itself, so all you have to do um, is just execute commands um, while while that stuff is happening. I feel like it's kind of a little bit like when you're, if you've played a like like kind of how Dragon Age did, did did combat a little bit, where you can pause it and everything's kind of like slow mowing a little bit, and you can kind of like yeah. tactically choose what they're gonna do, like defend, shoot lasers and or like like lightning and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's that's cool. I think I like that they put that in there. Um, but at the same time, it's making me think, like, why don't you just... Why wouldn't you just make it... If you're going to go through that much effort to make that mode, why not just, like, make a turn-based mode altogether? <laughs> but, I mean, I, I guess now, now that I said it out loud, it's it would be hard to... Because you basically would have to remake the entire game. So, scratch that. I totally see why they're doing it. And oh, man. And, no, it's, man. and it's nice that they, they put it in there. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I'm, they didn't have to, and I'm glad that they did. No, man, you just hot script it, see? So, like, you make, you, with on a weekend, you just make the world's most jankiest animation where everyone just, like, sort of, like, freaks out and pops <laughs> in, like, in, like, you know, two straight lines facing each other. And, and you know, you just go from there. <laughs> what if they, what if, what if they made, like, a, like, a classic, classic mode, and then when you toggle it on, it just plays the original Final Fantasy VII game? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, because that's what they did with, like, certain, uh, uh, point and click games, where, where, um, you, well, I guess that's more of a visual style thing, because I was thinking, like, a um, 
like the Monkey Island game where they like remade it and it looks like super nice and stuff, but you press a button and it looks like a shitty like DOS game <laughs> yeah, again. Um, so yeah, why don't, why don't you just like put put the original Final Fantasy VII on the same disc and then just press a button and it'll toggle and you'll just play Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Wait, hold on. You just made me really. What is the what is the deluxe edition for Final Fantasy VII come with? Because uh, they should put the game in there, the original game. Oh, that would be really cool. I don't know. Final yeah. Fantasy VII Deluxe. Let's see. Deluxe. So Final edition. Fantasy VII D- Remake Deluxe Edition. It comes with... You can summon uh, summon Cactor. Uh, you uh-huh. can summon uh, Chocobo Chick. And then there's an art book, a steelbook uh, case, and then the and soundtrack. The soundtrack. Yeah. So not not they should yeah they should just fucking put the base game in there. <laughs> oh, what about first class edition, the one that's like fucking two, like three hundred dollars? Oh, <laughs> let me see here. Let me see. Uh, let's see the remake, a cloud statue, which is honestly the most badass thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, uh, nope, no game. They, they should pack. It, what is it? It's like a drop in the bucket for them for mm-hmm. that edition. Come on, come on. Anyways, I just thought that would be cool. And like they should like rip you off too, where it's just like. Like it's like a, a it's like a specialized like hacked version of the original game. It's like the PC port, and but like right when you exit Metgar, the game just ends. <laughs> it's like there. It's like one to one. You can compare it. There you go. Mm. They yep. they definitely need they definitely need, they they're missing an opportunity here for sure. Is what's happening. <laughs> Oh man, what uh, what uh, what other stuff? Uh, hmm. What other interesting stuff happened? Okay, Terminator game that's coming out. What Terminator game? It's called. So remember, uh, the oh, so there's a game called Terminator Resistance, and it's like a Terminator FPS. I don't remember this. Yeah, so 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 it was it's it was announced, um, and then it's it's a game that's an FPS. It takes place. I believe, th- like around like thirty days or so after um, the second Terminator movie, so after Judgment mm-hmm. Day, um, and you play as like some nude guy, um, and and like yeah, it's it's just it's just a Terminator FPS, and it's it's gonna be coming out, I think in November, sometime in November is when the game comes out. It looks pretty cool. Um, the graphics are are great. From what I'm seeing, um, so that's something to look out for. It's gonna PS4, Xbox, and Steam is what it's gonna be out on. Um, but yeah, look forward to that. Looks good. Hmm. Also, Destiny Two is uh, announcing a new expansion for like their season two or something, mm-hmm. uh, which I believe is coming out in October. Um. Yeah, and then they like announced that like people are getting the annual pass for free or something, which kind of people are kind of getting upset about because they're like, "Oh, we paid for the like the people who paid for the pass are just like, why is it free now?" Which I kind of hate. Like, I hate I hate when that happens. Has that ever happened to you? Where you bought something and then like a week later it becomes free? Mm, not within the week. Uh, the closest thing I have is uh, I got the infamous two mm-hmm. bundle, which came with like a, a little backpack. I like the backpack and then, like a. And like, uh, dang it, what's his name? Oh, Cole, Cole statue and all that stuff. And I was like, super cool. Like, yeah, I was awesome. And I paid like, I don't know. I think I paid like $120 for it or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then like, not even like a month later, it was like three weeks. Um, the, like it was, it was only like 60, 70 bucks while the regular game was like, I don't know, like 40. And I was just like, come on, come on guys. <laughs> yeah. I think, it, I think it happened to me for Guild Wars 2's expansion. Like, uh, I think what happened was I convinced Jess and her brother and, like, a bunch of people to play Guild Wars 2 with me because the expansion got announced. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so I had, what happened was that um, they, I believe, like, they, the, they, they bought the Heart of Thorns DLC and then the game oh no no they bought the base game which gave them the dlc for free or something like that but then like the next day they're like oh yeah guild wars 2 the base game is free and i'm just like oh shit 
<laughs> oh, okay, cool. That's nice. Uh, they didn't have to buy the expansion. They could have just played the base game, and and that would have been fine. Um, but it was even funny as like after that we like we never found time to actually play Guild Wars two because a lot of live <laughs> stuff happened, and then so now like you can freaking just get the the latest DLC and you would get all your other stuff for free on top of it. And I was just like, oh, we could have just waited if we weren't gonna play it. Oh well. It's it's just kind of one of those like ah yeah, oh, that's a darn darn shame you know but like mm. at the same time you you at the time someone listed the price for something and you said yeah I'll pay that because it's worth that to me right yeah. and then mm-hmm. it becomes free later that you can't get mad about that you you deemed it to be worth that money and you gave them that money in exchange for that stuff. And then just because supply and demand changes, does it, you, you can't get mad about that. <laughs> uh, really, pretty recently, um, uh, I bought the Pocket Cast uh, app because I like podcasts mm-hmm. and I like good UI and interfaces. Mm-hmm. And they recently went free. And I forgot I even paid for that app. That's how long ago I paid for it. Yeah. And you know what? They did the nice thing. They're like, hey, the expensive version or or the paid version, we're going to give it to you for free for three years. And I'm like, oh, why are you going to ask for that? That's great. Mm-hmm. So I have a great life is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But it's not like they owe you anything, you know? No. no it's they not like they anything. owe you anything. But yeah. It's just, it's, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm too far removed from the situation where like I, if it was me and it was my money, then I'd probably be more upset. So it's, 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 it's not, it's, I guess it's not fair for me to say that. Um, so you keep doing you, you guys fight the good fight. Maybe they'll give you something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I don't have anything else to talk about. Oh, mm-hmm. anything new on the Jablinski Jablinski minutes front? Ooh, wow, we haven't done one of those in a while. We have not. We've we've missed a lot of Jablinski minutes. Yeah, I haven't watched the most recent one. It just came out today, I believe. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let's, I don't know. What what should we, I don't don't know. What should we do about this? I don't know. Is there anything interesting you want to talk about for Jablinski minutes? Well, I I haven't been watching them. (laughs) Oh, I thought, I thought them. you said I thought you saw the the most recent one is what you were no, saying. No, I did. I did not see the most recent. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, then you know we're just this is just a friendly reminder to bring back Jablinski minutes. Okay, that's right. The, the the man is high. Yes, yes. When when Brian tells me to bring back a segment, I I, I extrapolate that into millions of people want it back. So. Yes, exactly. I am the people, and the people want more Jablinski minutes. <laughs> There you go. I make up to uh to, to make up to twenty percent of our uh <laughs> of our viewership. So you owe it to me to do Chaplinski minutes. <laughs> uh all right. Well I think that's about as much time as we have uh for this uh, for this <laughs> week's episode. I gotta get packing because I'm heading off for a trip this weekend. Um yeah. Have a good trip. Thank you. See you next fall. Uh-huh. <laughs> See you in 2020 then, because it's currently this fall. <laughs> shut uh, up. You shut up. All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening, everybody. As always, uh, be sure to check out the website, noisepixel.net. It, we can't think of more stuff to say, but there's definitely a bunch of stuff on that website from the rest of the staff because they have a lot of stuff to say. A um, lot of good content on there. So the fun never ends. Noisepixel.net.